Welcome to Pretty Lies and Alibis. Join us as we seek the truth and travel the long road to justice. Happy Friday, everybody. It is time for another episode of Pretty Lies and Alibis. I'm Gigi. What you know, Fruit Loop? Uh, I know that you are majorly limping. Yeah, so I got uh, my results back today from my MRI, and pretty much everything in there is ripped and torn, and I don't that, have cartilage where it should be, so I haven't heard back from my doctor. That is an ugly MRI. Oh my gosh, it's like, you know, usually when you get one, there's one line of what's wrong. Uh, no, it's like a paragraph. <laughs> yeah, that, that picture looks like an alien, though. It does. I got all my images, so here I am yesterday trying to google normal (laughs) hip mri and compare it to mine and i knew it didn't look right but i haven't heard back from my doctor but he pretty much told me last week uh with my age and the condition i have with my joints it's gonna be a hip replacement Ooh! so uh happy summer to me all right you know what though it could be worse i mean this is nothing terminal this is something that can be fixed and life will go on for me so I'm just not going to complain yeah and it's instant relief I know I've rehabbed too with my mom and my aunt yeah and like there's things you can't do bend over and different stuff like that that's why Um, you have teenagers exactly that's why you have kids right exactly that's the whole reason I had kids is you know we're past the hammy the remote stage now it's like go clean the kitchen because my hips old yeah yeah (laughs) yeah so you had a cool meeting I did. So for the first time ever, me and my girls went up to Hendersonville, which is probably about 45 minutes from here, and met with uh, one of our very first listeners, Andrea, and her awesome husband. You were just so far away. Yeah. Um, it You were over two hours away from where we were, so... Um, we were sorry you couldn't be there, but yeah, I hated I missed it. They but. were the coolest people. It's it's really weird that you just sit down with with people and you feel instantly comfortable and like you've known them forever. Yeah, and we are a lot alike. And and Taylor, my oldest, just had a lot in common with her. It was just the funnest time. So that's cool. We just want to say hello to Andrea and her husband. She has a very cool quilt uh, business. She does the t-shirt quilts. I'm going to have to get one from oh, her. Oh, yeah. I been, I need to do that. I've got like 5 million t-shirts. You've seen my closet. Oh, yeah. I it's have, loaded. Okay. So I have 10 deep shelves that go from floor to ceiling in my closet. And my t-shirts are three stacks deep. I literally have hundreds. Yeah. So anyways, so that was amazing. And it was just so cool to actually meet somebody who listens to us. It was it was weird. But I mean, it was just we had the funnest time had some good barbecue. So we just want to thank them for such a nice yeah. uh, and they bought our dinner. So cool. Thank That's you. Cool. Maybe I uh, can meet them next time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We were missing you when the barbecue hit the table. Yeah. Oh, Taylor sent me a picture. Oh, yeah. Yeah. She she sent it to me. So the other thing, um, you know, last week we got uh, the the cool Kansas City Chiefs cuff, cups cuffs. Which are great, by the way. They are amazing. I use it all day. Ashley, one of our listeners in Georgia, I go to check the, the post office box and there is the coolest envelope. It's watercolor paint. And yeah. so it's our microphone and it's got Sherlock crawling up on it. Yeah. And um, I, I put it on all of our social media. I'm literally uh, going to have that framed and hang in here. Yeah, that was cool. She's so yeah, talented. talented. I, it's crazy. Our listeners, we have, you know, one listener who does the gourmet cookies out in Arizona and rolling in the dough. I, like, I can't draw yeah. a stick figure. And if I bake something, it's just going to get burnt. So it's really cool to see the dynamics of our listeners and the talents yeah. that are out there. Yep. So the merch store is going good. It's, yeah, we're surprised at how much we're selling. So thank you, everybody. We, um, when you get your stuff, shoot us a picture in inbox and we're going to work on that website some, and we want to have a page of people that just send us pictures in the merch. If you agree to let your picture be posted, Yeah. but we're really excited. That store has just kind of taken off. Yeah. Like a wall of fame. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, We need to do that. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so little Sherlock uh he's not little by the way no he's gotten so big yeah uh you got him a new collar okay yeah because he just gets out and I can do especially with my hip it's like I have to go outside and he's sneaky he's like a panther he just takes off and runs outdoors so I wanted to get a collar so people would know he belongs to somebody but it has a little bell on it which is not bad because I'll tell you I have not been sleeping good at night and so I'll be laying in my bed 
glancing at my phone at two in the morning and the cat just jumps up on the bed and it scares me to death. So I got this little bell. So the other night I just dozed off and it sounded like Santa was at the foot of my bed. You got Rudolph. He was scratching his neck and it just, it did. It sounded like sleigh bells. He's jingling. So I'm going to take the bell off. That's like a bear bell. When we hike, we use a bear bell. It's, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's supposed to scare them off, I guess. Right, yeah. Or, I guess, invite you to be dinner, I guess. Yeah. The bear be like, oh, here they come. <laughs> yeah. Dinner served. There they, here he comes. And we're still just working on some new things for the podcast. We're putting our brains together and trying to figure out new segments and new things we can do with video. Okay, the food thing. I want something that's not spicy. I have asked my contact for something that is not spicy. Yeah, because I, I will die. I know. And oh, then literally, I, that's part, part of the fun, but we won't put you through that. We've already yeah. made you read one of Chad's books, so we're gonna exactly. we're gonna give you a a I little get bit a free of free pass. That's right. So let's talk about Lori. Uh-oh. We have a lot to talk about today, by the way. Yeah. So it looks like she's been transferred to the mental hospital for treatment. Yep. A fly on the wall. I would love oh, to be. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. we're gonna see what what she's made of. Oh yeah. See how long this takes. Well, I mean, and my source, who's who we've got to do another glimpse at life sometime soon. I've got so much. We've just had so much stuff happening daily with all these cases. But she has given me a lot of insight into being incompetent and people who fake it. And she said, I don't know of anybody who faked it that stayed there very long. It's very, she said, everybody wants to come back to jail or prison. <laughs> It's that bad. Wow. So we'll see. But there was a Vine link. Um, we're signed up for it. So anytime. We got it originally in case she ever made bail. Yep. We wanted to get that notification. and But they do alert you when things have changed. So what did it say yesterday? Uh, so um, it was a, uh, for her, has custody status. So supervised custody detail. Mm-hmm. Another facility and the status was yesterday, June 24th. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so she those said, alerts kill me, though, sometimes. I know. Do you remember the one that was way back, and it looked like she had been released, and everybody flipped their lid? Oh, yeah. Even though we knew it was a mistake. Yep. They were updating the system, and that poor jail facility got thousands of calls, I think, from people saying, what in the world? Oh, yeah, I remember that. By the way, somebody said they want a shirt that says, with the logo, and says, what in the world? Oh, what the world? We got to do that. See, you say what the world, and I've always said what in the world. Yeah, what the world. Yeah. Yeah. Either way, same same thing. There we go. What about Chad? Uh, So Chad's trial has been set to begin November 8th and last five to six weeks through December 17th. He was not in attendance uh, at this hearing, and I don't think it was strange. Um, It looked like Pryor was maybe at his office. So this kind of a scheduling conference, not important. Pryor probably just didn't want to make that trip four hours to to sit there with Chad. Yeah, I don't blame him. Um, So I think, you know, a lot of people have asked, do you think this trial will happen then? And I think in one way, Pryor would like to because this sort of organically separates those trials if she's incompetent and receiving treatment. Oh, yeah. At the same time, I really expect the prosecution to put death on the table as a bargaining chip. To try yeah. to settle this stuff. So if that happens, he's going to have to get new lawyers. Yeah, because you got to get one that, that can try those cases. Right. And yeah. I'm sure Pryor will stay on of counsel. Same with Means. I don't think when that happens, he's just going to step aside. But <laughs> you ain't going nowhere. No, he ain't going nowhere. They're, they're joined at the hip, kind of. I mean, yeah, it's rather odd. Very odd. <laughs> <laughs> but why are we now doing British accents know. all of a sudden? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but so you think about it. Think about all the discovery. These new lawyers are going to have to, I mean, thoroughly investigate all this stuff. So I don't think it's going to go off in November. No, I don't think so either. I don't see it happening. It would be nice. But um, the uh, Wagner brother, George the Fourth, had a hearing this week. You know, his trial date is going to be one week shy of six years that the murders took place. So you're, wow. you see... How these things are never quick. Oh, yeah. So that's just something for scale. Yeah, it takes, uh, I'm on a forever. Uh, yeah, the out sand of the line. Sandlot. Yeah. For, yeah. Oh, I want to watch that again. Oh, yeah, it's classic. Windy Peppercorn. Yeah, it's one of my favorite movies. It is great. Yeah. Yep. So Pryor will get a transcript of that, uh, the grand jury testimony. Yeah, that's interesting. I'm sure he's ready to get his hands on that because that's going to be uh, some new stuff to him. And 
I mean, I think at this point you start crafting your defense around that grand jury testimony because that was what got the indictment. Yep. Big stuff. So yep. I don't think we're going to see anything soon. What about Nate? He put something out this week that had everybody's ears straight up. Okay. So Nate posted a comment and said, asking for a friend. Let's say you're a dedicated journalist who's been following a high profile case. You legally stumble upon dozens and dozens of pages of fascinating new information in relation to the case. You spend hours reading every word and writing a story. As you're about finished, you learn the documents were supposed to be sealed by a judge. <laughs> and now, you all right over there? I'm dying. I just, my coffee <laughs> went down the wrong tube. It just came out my nose. Uh, that, see, that got me too when they were supposed to be sealed by the judge. Yeah. Cough, cough. Right. Um, and they now are... Um, and they now are, so they're now sealed, and that publishing the story could jeopardize the case and witnesses, uh, or it might not. You never know. What do you do? Post the story or hold it back? Your thoughts, please. Well, everybody was a buzz. Um, but you know what's what's cool is it didn't matter what group I went into, everybody overwhelmingly said, hold it, man. Yeah, because as much as we want to know, we don't want it to cause any problems trying the case. So it, Yeah, but it, it definitely, I would like to know what he knows. Exactly. Well, it wasn't confirmed it was about this case, but I mean, come True. on. I'm not a rocket scientist, clearly, but yeah, I think it was. Yeah. Maybe we need to go have dinner with Nate. What's up, Nate? Yeah. Why are you Nate. teasing us like that, yeah, dude? Yeah, let's, let's go have His dinner His little Nate. daughter is making quite the mark. Oh, I know, right? She is interviewing huge celebrities. She's adorable. Yeah. Uh, that kid's going to be, she's going to be one we sit back and watch when, when we're old. She's going to be that awesome little reporter like the Barbara Walters or, you know, Oprah. What are you talking about when we are old? Dude, when we hit 40, we fell apart. <laughs> well, I tell you what, I say when we're old and here I am thinking about what I got to do before my hip replacement. Exactly. <laughs> like, I got to bum Achilles. Every time I get up, my Achilles feels like it's just going to bust out my leg. We're so there. Yeah, we're there. All right. So Means filed a motion to compel against the state for discovery again. Oh, and hello. he says he hasn't gotten um, anything from a request he made on May the 27th. And the state replied to that on June 10th and said that discovery would be produced by July the 15th. Okay, so wouldn't that tell him that he needed to wait till July 15th to say that? Well, you would think, but he's asking for uh, a hearing about this matter and also sanctions to be placed on the prosecution. So I don't know why it's, the rush is his, I mean, she's incompetent right now. Yeah, I, I saw that. Somebody said, really? Uh, he's not even entitled to discovery. Yeah. Like, for some of the stuff, because technically she hasn't been charged yet. I mean, I, she hasn't been arraigned. Yeah, because they postponed mm -hmm. it. Yeah, even her first appearance was. So whenever she's competent, we are going to go back to the first appearance, because that didn't even happen. So yeah. we're a long way from any of this stuff, with her especially. Yeah, I don't know. Means, I don't know. Yeah. So prior, uh, like I said, he seemed to be at his office or not at the jail. Um, he was very polite this hearing. There was no condescending tone or statements or anything. It, um, uh -oh. um He moving up. <laughs> <laughs> but he did file a motion to delay the motion to dismiss hearing. Ah, uh, gotcha. Because probably he's got to see what this grand jury said. Oh, yeah. He want to read all that stuff. Yeah. What else did he say? Uh, he says he has not received any discovery from the state. The request for discovery was accepted on June 15th. Um, and we talked about this. Um, the process for that is very, um, the, it's just long. It is. Because um, you've got to upload. And we were discussing it about your computer. We've been trying to uh, get done right yeah I have an iPhoto album and I'm a shutter bug so I literally have over 200,000 pictures and videos and I have a new new iMac but th it's so large that every time I get you know almost 24 hours into transferring it stops and so I've never and I'm so nervous because to to if this computer were to die and I were to lose this got videos of my grandpa my kids births all that stuff i'm so scared but it's it is not easy to transfer all the stuff up no and, and i can't imagine what they have i have one terabyte i mean they've got to have a lot of yeah. terabytes so yeah. it's it takes time yeah so prior offered to hand deliver the prosecutor hard drives to download the discovery on wood said no who would accept that i mean yeah. that's crazy like 
I th- and I, I think the process, they have to verify any kind of um, thumb drives, that, you know, whatever that mm-hmm. they put stuff on because very easily um, programs can be, you know, secretly loaded on your computer and you don't even know it. Right. So, but I think there's, you know, there's just a process to all this and I'm sure the prosecution delivers that discovery I mean and I get maybe he's just anxious to get it and he wants to hurry it up but it's just it's court it's legal it's not going to be fast oh yeah yeah I I would love to be the person sitting there entering all that right I'm gonna tell you I would read the whole thing oh dude I yeah I would be you know on maybe like 20 gigabytes at this point I mean I would yeah 24 7 I'm on page two (laughs) yeah yeah. so so Pryor's just basically saying the state hasn't given him discovery and he doesn't have the time needed within the 14 days to argue the motion to dismiss so gotcha that's kind of his uh his his issue. But I think there was a verbal agreement, right, to give the state a short yeah. extension. It seemed like so. Pryor was kind of like, okay, yeah, they've said it. I believe they'll do it. To where it means is let's let's get sanctions against them and let's have a hearing. So yeah, it's two yeah. different approaches, and I think obviously Pryor's approach is is the most sane. Oh yeah. So like we were saying earlier, Billy Wagner the fourth had a hearing the Roden murders, Pike County massacre. Um, his trial date has been set for April 4th of, um, next year, 2022. Yeah. Um, like I said, a week shy of six years since the murder. So these things don't go fast, but here's what's funny. They're questioning Jake's mental health status regarding his admission of guilt. Of course they are. Yeah. They said he hit his head as a kid on a bike or something or bumped his head and, you know he it caused a mental illness <laughs> right yeah dude every lick i've ever had has been on my head same here and i ain't killed nobody i mean that might explain some stuff about the two of us True. but you know yeah so True. they're saying you can't even trust the fact that he pled guilty uh whatever so we're gonna jump into the murder murders all right this is gonna be the case that keeps on giving i'm yeah, afraid it's big and, I, you know, the thing that kind of bothers me, I've seen a ton of people celebrating the fact that these people were murdered just because they're rich in high society and have connections. But that's horrible. It's sad. I mean, I'm sorry. Nobody deserves to be slaughtered like that. And regardless of what has happened in the past that at the hands of Paul, um, you know, I just um, it's really weird to see people saying, oh, yeah, he deserved it. Yeah. No, oh, nobody deserves to be murdered. I don't care what you've done. No. That's why we have a justice system. Yeah. So Alex and Buster have offered a hundred thousand dollar reward for information leading to the arrest and conviction. Um, Sled and Crime Stoppers are kind of they're laying back on this one. Yeah, they are. Um, the Crime Stoppers reward cap. They're it's like what ten thousand. Yeah, they they cap out at ten thousand of what they offer for information that leads to the arrest and conviction. Yeah. So Sled will allow those tips to come through their tip line. But that's like the extent of it. Uh, there's an attorney who's helping set up the reward. Uh, Jim Griffin uh, was Paul's attorney in the boat crash. Yeah. And so the statement that we're going to read uh, is the first time we've heard from Alex since the double murders. And he says, um, let's see, uh, Alex and Buster Murdaugh announced today a reward of $100,000 for information leading to the arrest and conviction of the person or persons who brutally murdered Paul and Maggie on June 7th, 2021. I want to thank everyone for the incredible love and support that we have received over the last few weeks. Now is the time to bring justice for Maggie and Paul. Buster and I, along with Maggie's mother, father, and our entire family, ask that anyone with helpful information immediately call the SLED tip line or Crime Stoppers. And Crime Stoppers of the Low Country are going to be the ones handling the tips. And the funds are coming from Alex's law firm. Hmm. So a lot of people have wondered why it took two weeks to put an award or award reward out for <laughs> uh, um clearly that coffee came out of my nose it should have went in my belly so i'd be a little more alert um and and so i've been watching a little bit of ashley banfield regarding this case she's got some awesome coverage getting some insider information and a source told her that a weapon was left at the scene and she also said that one of the boat passengers was tested for gunshot residue two days after the murders 
Wow. Um, I don't think anything came of that. But the one thing I didn't know is apparently when you have gunshot residue on your hands, it's very hard to get off. Yeah, even if you wash them, it doesn't come off. That's crazy. I didn't know that. I figure you just go put some Purell on your hand and boom, uh-uh. it's gone. Nope. So, yeah. Yeah, I, I learned that on like NCIS or something. You and your NCIS. Hey, it's classic. <laughs> Leroy Jethro Gibbs, come on now. I love the first 48. Yeah. That is my jam. Yeah, but, it's funny because when we go to watch it here, you can scroll through and you've watched every one of them. Oh, yeah, no. But see, what I found out yesterday is there's like 300 episodes of the first 48, and I'm maybe 50 in. It's like Dude. bad hit, first 48 marathons. Yeah, you're going to watch them all. You know what I'm going to be doing for, other than the podcast, I'm going to have more than enough time to dedicate to this show. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, where was I? All right. On her show, she said she was told that the um, that the family didn't use the hunting lodge, Moselle at the time. Yeah, the Moselle. That's what they called it. They didn't use it all the time. They were they would lend it out regularly. Yeah, because a lot of people were wondering if that was their primary residence, and apparently not. Um, they said during COVID, a lot of people kind of came and went from there. Just people stuck at home, and well, let's just go to our buddy's house that has what thousand acres and go hunting. Gotcha. Wow. Yeah. So Maggie's phone was missing the night of the murders? Yes. And we just heard this yesterday um, that her phone was not found with her. It was found outside the, the property on the side of a road. Very suspicious to me because here's the thing. The night of the murders, there was some terrible rain down there. And I mean, low country rain <laughs> up here, it's bad. Down there, it just seems like the rain's worse. Oh, yeah. It's well, just, everything runs downhill, too. Uh, so. well, yeah. So well, it rained really bad, bad enough to where they had to put tents up to preserve some of the crime scene before they were finished processing it. But here's the thing. The phone wasn't found until a family member used, I guess, find my iPhone where you can ding it and it pings the location. Yeah. And... How did that phone last out in a monsoon rain with no charging on the battery and you find it a day or two later? No it, way. It just make it doesn't make sense to me. Uh-uh. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I just thought that was kind of odd. Yeah, I don't I don't think it I don't it don't make sense either. But there's a lot of things in this story that's odd, so Oh yeah. Take your pick. Yep. Um but one thing too that I read yesterday was that Paul was disfigured from the blast of the shotgun that had to have been pretty close because otherwise you get like buckshot right yeah yeah depending on what you use but yeah um yeah if it's close it's going to do the most damage yeah um so that's i mean just unfortunate they did tow a black chevy suburban from the scene and that car was apparently found near the dog kennels where the bodies were found and the um Police didn't put this out there. The owner of the towing company did. And that's all they said. But the person also said, the person that drove the car to the impound lot said they didn't see any blood or bullet holes on Hmm. the car either. So uh, there's so much unknown. Oh, yeah. So the people in the community have said they hope this stops the pull the Murdoffs have in that town. I can I can't imagine. Yeah. That's dangerous when somebody, you know, one family has that much power. You're so right. Uh yeah. yeah. Um people are afraid to even speak about the even, murders. That's crazy. Even now with the murders, they're just afraid to even say that was terrible what happened to Paul and Maggie. Um wow. so that goes to show you um now, so we're going to jump on to um we talked on the last episode about the death of Stephen Smith and the rumor, which we don't do on the show, but it's out there in mainstream media. So we're okay with putting it out there was that the, the young man, Stephen Smith, I believe he was 19. He was found dead in the middle of a road and the Murdoch's were named in the investigation. The correction that I want to make is originally we were told that it was 40 times that this family was mentioned in this investigation Yesterday, the Island Packet, which is kind of the Island Packet and Fitz News are the two best sources about this case. The Island Packet said it was nine times that um, that the Murdoch family, some Murdoch family members, not the whole family, were named. Gotcha. But they're reopening this death. Wow. They are reopening the investigation. And I kind of have a theory. 
you know that they've got search warrants for Paul's cell phone, um, inbox, Facebook, Instagram, whatever. Yeah. And they also did the search warrant in Columbia at his apartment from where he lived when he was at school. I wonder if going through all this digital evidence at some point, maybe Paul had something in there that implicated him and other family members in this murder. Makes sense. Very interesting because the kid's mother, Stevens, he was found dead on July 8th, 2015. And, um, in the file on the case, there was a tip that was called in by somebody that asked if Buster and Steven ever had any kind of a relationship. And the caller just said he had heard this from other people, that the rumor mill was in full swing. Hmm. And at the time, Steven's mother told a local news source that she thought her son's death was a hate crime. So I think she had her own theories. But if you're dealing with maybe implicating a family like that, you might not want to say it too loud. Yeah, but didn't she say something else? She also said she knew who murdered her her son, and the killers come from a well-to-do family. Uh-uh. So um, when these murders happened, law enforcement reached out to her, and she was hopeful that maybe they were reaching out because they were going to reopen it. But at the time, they were just sort of questioning them about where were you. And I guess you have to eliminate suspects, obviously, and people who are... You know, Mallory Beach's family who were innocent in this most likely. uh, And this lady, you still have to eliminate them because you have to see who has a problem with this family. Oh, yeah. But it had to be kind of hard for the mom when they come and you know nothing's been done about your son's death. There's conflicting opinions between law enforcement and the coroner, the medical examiner on the cause of death. So Yeah, it's a big mess. Yeah, so she said she's waited six years for this and it won't bring Stephen back, but it will give her a peace of mind. I didn't know that Stephen had a twin sister. Yeah, that's interesting. I wonder, well, they say twins can feel things. So. Oh, yeah. I mean, my, my dad had twin sisters, and they were that way. And ironically, they both died of pancreatic cancer just a couple of years apart. Very young, uh, in their 40s. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Twins are amazing. Yeah. Um, so on December 7th, 2015, investigators got a tip saying that three males were the ones responsible for Stephen's death. And specifically named a Murdoch as one of them, uh, but he didn't specify which one. Yeah. And then on December 18th, 2015, another tip was called in, and a man said that his stepson told him the name of who had struck and killed Stephen. He told investigators that Paul and Buster's uncle, Randy, told him to call and report it. Wow. So Randy was on Good Morning America last week. Now, this could be rumor, but this came from what i believe it's a file yeah okay we have to pause my orthopedic doctor is calling me (laughs) hold on hello we're back and my orthopedic surgeon essentially told me what i thought which is um you gotta have that hip replaced but it's all good i got an excuse to be lazy there you go. Your kids are going to be waiting on you hand and foot. Heck yeah. Get one of those, uh, you know, like the fans like they do on those old Egyptian movies. Oh, I'm going to have one of them feed me grapes. Exactly. And like the other can fan me and I'm going to get a bell. I'm going to get one of those little bells. Oh, yeah. that ring. You and Sherlock can have now, your bell. I tell you what, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to hit that find my iPhone alert because it jolts you when it goes there off. You go. I'm just be like, I need, I need something. I need some coffee. Yeah, how many times they do that to you? Mom. I know, right? I need a snack. I can be in the bed curled up, super comfy, and Sarah Rose will say, Mom, you're closer. Can you get a bottle of water? I'm literally two feet closer to the kitchen than she is. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. So it's going to be good. It's going to be wild. All right, so moving on. On July 13th, 2016, investigators followed up on an anonymous tip to interview a local resident who was suspected to have participated in Stephen's death. He was asked if he was friends with the Murdaugh boys, and he denied it. And he says he graduated with a girl who has the last name Murdaugh, but was not connected. He said he wasn't connected to any of the Murdaughs on Facebook, but he was friends with Buster on Facebook. Uh Uh-oh. So, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I'm telling you, all the skeletons are popping out of this closet, and I don't think we're going to stop with Stephen's death or these double murders. Here's the thing. Or Mallory's death. Oh, yeah. Here's the thing. A lie it continues to turn into a lie. Right. Like it snowballs into this big, huge, you know, thing. So, yeah. I just yeah. feel like we're going to see a lot of dirty laundry come out. 
Oh, yeah. Because I think this in itself, the double murders and the questions about Mallory's death and now Stephen's death, this family, just from this point, will never hold the same status they have. Yeah. Those days are gone. Oh, So no. maybe yeah. now people will feel less threatened coming out yeah. with stuff they Making know. Make it be a normal town. Right, right, exactly. I mean, you've yeah. got... You've got sled from the Midlands handling this case because essentially they just don't want any agency in the low country handling this. Yeah. Yeah. yeah there's a lot that's going to happen. Yep. So the person was also asked if he had ever attended any parties with any of the Murdals and he said no. Right. And Stephen's mom, um, like we said, she's just really excited that maybe her son will have some justice. Um, Sled also, the day that we did the last episode, as soon as we clicked off and we were finished, Sled released the redacted police report because here in South Carolina, by law, they have so many days to release the initial police report and they weren't doing it. Well, finally, some some newspapers and agencies in the low country started suing Sled. Like, you've got to give us this information. Wow. It was pretty much all redacted. <laughs> I mean, it was... Just all black. Yeah, it was very, very basic. And I get it. I mean, if they're looking for suspects that are unknown, although I think they're known because there's no threat to the community uh, 12 hours after the murders, they know what's up. Oh, yeah. Um. So... Okay. Let's see, they located, oh, they were on scene at 10.25 p.m. and the scene was cleared at 3.11 a.m. Yeah. Um, they located shell casings. Uh, they It seems they uh, impounded a car from the crime scene. And that was what we had just recently discussed, the, the black Suburban. Yep. yep. And um, this was very weird to me. The medical examiner on scene contaminated his gloves and the investigator was asked to take the necessary pictures of the victims, which I kind of thought, why would you not just switch out your gloves and do yeah, what you got to do? Um, yeah. I, I don't know. I mean, that's probably nothing. But for me, it was just sort of, I mean, when I used to scrub in OR cases, if you contaminate, you just go re-scrub and put your gloves on. Uh, Yeah. Pick right back up. Yeah. That's weird. So one officer was instructed to ride um, Moselle Road to look for homes or businesses that may have had exterior security cameras that face the road. And then they also extended the crime scene with a second parameter, but they didn't get, you know, it was all blacked out. Wow. So lastly, before we end this, let's talk about some rumor control because um, the Island Packet put out an article this week where some rumors were kind of running rampant and they were trying to get a hold of them. Yeah. So this week it was rumored by a trusted source that Paul and Maggie may have been tied up. Yes. And I've had somebody tell me personally that they've heard that was the case. Now I know, you know, my sister's brother, brother's uncle's aunt's neighbor's best friend that's a whole thing but when it comes to rumors but um i've been told by somebody that it it was true they were bound we shall see wow so the bond violation after the boating accident paul uh and i think we talked about this Mm -hmm. uh he got a speeding ticket for going more than 15 miles an hour over the speed limit in charleston um and the fine for expired fire extinguisher on board uh, he never had any conditions of bond except limiting where he could be, and that was lifted so he could return to college. Right. So even though he got a speeding ticket for in for over fifteen, um, and even though he he was charged with boating under the influence resulting in death, he never had the the normal um, parameters put on him that people do. So yeah. these weren't bond violations because he had he had no terms of bond. Yeah, <laughs> which That's doesn't crazy. happen. No. So yeah, it's um. Also, there were no dogs that were killed on the night of the murders. That was floating around. And also, um, there were some rumors that Paul was in court the morning he was murdered. And that is not true. He was not in court. Gotcha. So that's kind of all we know right now. This is a very fluid case. It seems like every time I sit down at my computer, there's a little something else out there. Yeah. So I think this is going to be a very big case for us right now while we let Lori get you know her competency restored and get chad's um or she gets tired of being right yeah yeah she might i'm done i'm competent i'm I'm competent i get who mark means is yeah who Um, is he so i think this is going to be one of the main ones for right now because so much is unknown it's a a lot of this is mystery it's sort of a whodunit yeah um i don't know i don't think that the dad did it i really don't um i know in the beginning it was a little suspect but i just feel like uh, something would have been said. And I, 
I don't know why the FBI hasn't jumped in on this case with all the influence that that family has. Oh, I know. You would think the FBI would just say, yeah, we're coming in and we're going to do this right. Yeah, exactly. And we're going to investigate uh, Stephen's death. We're going to investigate the maid's death who fell down the stairs at their house. And we said last time Alex settled a wrongful death suit for $500,000. Yep. I would love to see the FBI come in and just clean house. Oh, yeah. Yeah, most definitely. Hey, so, I've got a crazy dumb law still on the book. Oh, yeah. We're going to start doing this, by the way. we You guys love that you can't shoot at a well from a moving car. We yeah. got a lot of comments. And we also got uh, a lot of comments of people telling us that something's rotten in Denmark. is Shakespeare. Oh, is it? Yeah. And clearly, I haven't picked up Shakespeare since uh, senior year in high school. I love Shakespeare. It's very hard for me to read, though. Oh, it's like, hard. I just, yeah. yeah, it's hard to understand. So thank you guys for that. So what were you going to say? Uh, so in Georgia, it is illegal to put your ice cream cone in your back pocket on Sunday. <laughs> That's so crazy. <laughs> <laughs> like, who comes up with these stuff? Yeah, so we're going to start doing dumb laws. There was also one of you can't uh, shoot at Bigfoot in Washington State. Yeah. I mean, just crazy stuff. It's y- These had to have come from the 1800s. Oh, yeah, way back when. I mean... I don't know what they were smoking when they made some of these laws, but you know. Yeah, I don't either. I, mean, I was planning on going down to Charleston this weekend and shooting at a well for my Jeep. Exactly. But it's illegal, so. Darn it. My weekend plans are shot. Yeah, exactly. I guess I'll just sit around here like the old woman I am with my hip on ice and, you know. Yeah. Yell at little kids to stay off my front lawn. Yep, and uh, binge you some first 48. Yeah, I think if I have to spread my wings a little bit, though, I want to watch uh, Cruella. That's out. And then yep. my kids have friends over today, so they're wanting to watch, I think it's Luca. Yeah, I saw that one somewhere. Yeah. So, like, I haven't seen it, but I saw the advertisement. Yeah, and my house, I really need to clean it. But Make them kids do it. I know. I'm going to fall on the floor and say, I can't, I can't do this. Guys, you please do dust for alert. me. Yeah. I've <laughs> fallen and I can't get up. I know. And see... You know, I mean, I'm gonna have to go further and get one of those clap on, clap off lights. Because what if I get in my bed after my surgery and I realize I've left my light on? I can oh, just yeah. clap my hands twice and boom. That or you just gonna sleep with the light on. Yep. No, it ain't gonna happen. I did that one time when I lived in West Virginia because a bat was in the house. And you stayed in the house? Well, the it was a crazy story. The bat was flying around and then it fell and we couldn't find it. Oh. And I was like, oh, uh uh-uh. uh. <laughs> so I slept with my light on. Uh uh-uh, I'd have slept in my car. Or like put some uh garlic around your neck. Oh, dude. I, I like slept under the cover and the pillow. <laughs> That's crazy. Do you remember the time were you there when the squirrel got my parents uh closet? I think so. I think yeah. I remember that. It was like Clark Griswold with the, with <laughs> the squirrel. Squirrel, squirrel in the tree. I always love when he turned around. He's like, where is it? Where is it? And it's on its back. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> squirrel. So that's all that we had for you guys today. And uh, we'll be back at some point in the next few days. Just whatever works for our both of our schedule. Well, my schedule's wide open. Yeah. Uh, but we got uh, Fruit Loop here with a full-time job at the theater. And uh, But the good thing is this podcast will not suffer. Yeah. We will keep cranking them out, yep. and we've got some really fun segments we're starting to plan that we're going to put on video on YouTube just to just to kind of add a little bit more to what we're doing. Yep. I think it's going to be a good summer for us, and yeah, we're going to have fun and hopefully just keep cranking them out. And uh, we appreciate all you guys, though. Like, in the last few weeks, really, it, it it's just been a period in this podcast where meeting a listener and all these sweet messages about my hip and you know about your sugar and all that and you yeah. just realize like our base is amazing oh yeah yep. like we i have told, awesome i would totally just love to bring everybody just over and hang out with all of our listeners yeah because honestly like we have no no drama or negative comments or anything mostly nothing no. except i mean yeah, there have been a couple yeah uh they somebody said we were too still magnolias for them. that's okay we're oh, not yeah. for everybody. No. That's cool. Because yeah. we, I mean, we make colossal mistakes on here. Exactly. <laughs> um, but anyway, so we'll have a new one out for you soon. We're probably tomorrow night going to shoot that very first uh, prison cooking special. And then we'll probably have that up sometime late Sunday by the time we edit it and all yeah. that. Yeah. So just uh, get excited. We're going to do all kinds of stuff. If you have ideas for segments, send us a message. We're yeah, open. We'll see. We are open. Yep. To whatever. All right. We well, all right. have a good afternoon. Have a good weekend. Have a good weekend.